you would have a cash flow of $776 per month. What's up everybody? In this video, I'll be giving you a step-by-step -step guide. It'll be 11 steps on how you could purchase your first rental property using the seller finance strategy. You may potentially not have to put down a down payment or you won't even have to use any of your credit to actually get this done. Now, this is not financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. I'm giving you a brief introduction on how it can be done. You still have to do a little bit more research and educate yourself on how you could potentially move forward with getting this done. But this will give you a solid foundation to get this done. Let's get into it. Now, in step one, it's all about down payment. Now, you wanna put money aside and continue to put money aside in case you run into that property that you may wanna purchase and you gotta put down a down payment to actually get the property closed on. Now, how I always look at it when it comes to seller finance, I always go in with the mindset that the seller wouldn't want anything down. Now, if the seller mentions to me a down payment, then I would say, what amount would actually work for you to get us to the closing table as a down payment? Then that's when you do it. But other than that, that down payment amount, whether it's 5,000, 6,000, you actually be able to put that towards renovations if renovations are needed to move a tenant in. So that would be your first step. Step two. Step two is very important because you need to know what market you would actually be going in. So if you're in the Charlotte area and you're looking for properties closer uptown, you'll notice that those properties are gonna sell more than properties that may be in the university area or be in Kannapolis on the outskirts of the Charlotte metro area. So what you need to do, you need to sit down and figure out what properties are selling for in the tip top condition and what properties will be selling for in the condition that you will be looking for, such as vacant properties that may have been vacant for a couple of years or properties that may have an absentee owner and may have a tenant already in place that may have minimum wear and tear. So just getting familiarized with your market is very, very important because you don't wanna overpay for the property. You wanna make sure you get the property at the right number with wiggle room to actually make mistakes and still come out making a profit. So that is step two. So let's get into step three. Step three is driving for dollars. That is one of my favorite strategies. And I actually use this strategy on a day-to-day -day base in my wholesaling business to generate potential leads. So with driving for dollars, you would actually have to download the deal machine app and the deal machine app would be $60 per month. But what it's gonna do, it's gonna actually be able to give you the seller's information so that you can actually export the Excel spreadsheet out of deal machine and into a skip tracing service, which I will mention in a later step. So what you'll do, you will take a picture of the home so you can remember exactly how it looks. And you will look for vacant properties or properties that may be owned by an absentee owner, which means someone that doesn't live in the property, but they have a tenant in place. And what you will be able to do is call these sellers and see if they would actually want to sell. This is a good app that you can use, but you can also use the free route. The free route would actually just use pen and paper, write down the address to the property, and then go home and research the owner of the property because it's all public records. So that's what you would do in step three. Let's go to step four. So in step four, we would actually skip trace the sellers. When I say skip trace, I mean, after we got the property information out of the deal machine app, which I said before, you would get an Excel spreadsheet, you will export that spreadsheet, email it to yourself, or you can go to the deal machine app on your computer and export it straight out of there and they'll automatically be on your computer. And you would actually upload that Excel spreadsheet to a skip tracing service such as REI Skip, uh, Bat Skip Tracing. Bat Skip Tracing is my favorite because I have more hits with their phone numbers. And also, you will never get 100% accurate phone numbers whenever you are skip tracing. Some of the numbers gonna work, some of the numbers won't. You'll get mobile numbers and you'll get landlines that you can actually call these sellers. And you would also get emails. So what you would do once you skip trace those phone numbers, you can either hand dial one by one each property. Let's say in the deal machine app, you got 50 properties one day you would hand out each phone number until you get through all 50 properties to see if any of these sellers want to sell if they don't ask them can you follow up with them if they do let's go to the next step 
which is step five. Step five. Step five is one of my favorites. And the reason why, because I am able to track that 84% of everyone that's viewing my videos are not subscribers to the channel. Listen, if you want to continue to get great content from me, and if you are enjoying the content, if, if you will be so kind, just hit the subscribe button, like the video, and also turn on the notification bell because I would also continue to make more real estate videos on other topics as well that's going to help benefit you and help benefit everyone else too. And it's going to help boost this content and the algorithm as well too. So just take that one second to do that for me and let's get back into the content. All right, so let's get into the real step five. So step five is is give the sellers a call. So once you able to get the correct phone number and you reach out to the sellers, now you wanna see if they wanna sell. If they wanna sell, they're gonna tell you yes. And at that point, you just need to collect more details on the property condition. Is it a tenant in there? When is the tenant leases up? You just need to collect all that information to figure out what the property is actually worth. The most important thing is the property condition. Because then, if you're not familiar with running comps, there's videos on YouTube that can teach you how to run comps. You can also sit down with a realtor and see if they would actually help you with seeing what the property is worth once you collect that information and get pictures on the property. So that would actually be your step five, getting that information from the seller and preparing yourself to make an offer. Let's get into step six. So step six, step six is making your educated offer based off of the information that you collect and the information or the information you got from your realtor. So at this particular point, what you would do is if the seller agreed to your, your price, you're gonna put it on the contract. So remember, we're not giving out a cash offer, which will be 200,000 or 300,000. We may purchase the property at 200,000, but we may not put anything down or we may purchase it at 200,000 and the seller may want 2,500 down as a down payment and you make payments to them every single Single month. So in this particular scenario, let's say that, let's say you agree to a price with the seller of $200,000. At closing, you attempt to not give a down payment at closing, but the seller asks for one and you guys actually agree on a $2,500 down payment. That's going to actually create a loan amount of $197,500 and that's going to create a mortgage amount of $549 per month. Property taxes in my area, in the Charlotte area, will be around $179 per month on a $200,000 property. Insurance, you actually pay $150 a month for insurance and expenses such as repairs or upcoming repairs that may happen in the near future, you put aside $200. And you also put money aside for vacancy just in case the property ever is vacant. And let's say for vacancy, you put aside $150. Your total expense will be $1,224 per month. So at that point, you know that in order to actually cash flow positive on this property, you're gonna have to make, your rental income have to be more than $1,224. So let's say, especially in my area, three bedroom, two bath would actually go for $2,000 a month. So if you subtract the $1,224 per month, from the $2,000, you would have a cash flow of $776 per month. Now, take this with a grain of salt and just remember that it's more factors that go in, but I'm just keeping it as simple as possible when it comes down to the monthly cash flow. So you can see what makes a good deal and what doesn't make a good deal. And also to bring this property into rentable condition, you know that $5,000 will put you to the point where you can actually rent the property for $2,000 a month. So your out-of-pocket cost to actually own this property would be the $2,500 as a down payment at closing and the $5,000 in repairs. But you're able to make $776 per month in cash flow. So your return on investment for this property would be 24%, which is amazing. But I just wanted you to understand this is just a brief introduction to actually analyzing the deal and how to actually create a seller finance deal. You put that 2,500 down and you put your 5,000 in renovations and that's how much it actually costs for you to take over a property that is worth $200,000. So that would be your step six, getting it under contract after you make your offer. Step seven is an inspection. In all my agreements, I have an inspection period, which is mostly the length of the contract, which normally is around 30 days. 
So during that inspection period, that'll allow you to get your contractors in and see what it actually costs to fix the property up to the point where you can rent it out or fix it up completely. So that'll let you know if your numbers are spot on and it'll allow you to back out of the agreement if the numbers doesn't make sense and if the seller didn't tell you everything that was wrong with the property. So that would be what you would do in step seven is get an actual cost of what it will cost to get the property fixed up. After you verify all those things, and you got a solid number in place and you got a property under contract and you agree to everything, it's time to move on to step eight, which is close on the property. I use real estate attorneys to close on properties and close on wholesale deals that I do. So that will be the next process and you will have closing costs involved with that as well too. But that's pretty much step eight. Step nine, which should be the day after, get started with the renovations because the longer you hold on to the property without making any repairs, the more it's costing you out of your pocket every single month because you are paying the seller a certain amount every single month to own the property. Step 10, once everything is completed, the renovations and everything, it's time to rent it out. So now you rent out the property at $2,000 and you're making $776 in cash flow every single month with your 24% ROI, which is return on investment. Step 11 is just repeat the process. Repeat the process over and over and guess what? Since you're not going the conventional route, you don't have to worry about potentially running out of the amount of loans that you can take out. Once you use seller finance, you can get 100 seller finance deals in one month if you want to, if you can handle it if you got the team to handle that. So that's step 11, just repeat the process. Now, I have other videos of how you can actually get started in real estate investing with no money down, with no credit. I'm gonna link it here. Please feel free to check it out. And if you enjoy this content, definitely hit the like button. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell because I'll continue to make more content such as this one and make sure you check out my videos that I will have here and here that may be of interest of you and I'll see you next time.